Good morning, everyone. Welcome into this virtual sanctuary for spiritual family members and friends and all those who may be joining us for the first time. It is our joy to be here with you on this lovely morning and ready now to know something greater than ourselves and to be part of a gathering that has the possibility of creating within each and every one of us that open receptivity to something new and wonderful happening. So please join me now as we center ourselves in the awareness of the presence. So this is what each one of us can know. I am ready now to come to center, to relax, to release, to let go, of all of the concerns of the outer world and to move into that true home of mine, that inner mind of heart and allow myself to be strengthened and uplifted and transformed by my conscious connection with my source the source of all being, the creator of all life, my life, the sustainer of life, the provider of all good, the lover of my soul and all souls and all life. And so I allow myself now to lean into that presence and to simply breathe and relax and allow my mind to come to rest and just savor that sense of being totally and fully embraced, safe in the presence of the divine, the lover of my soul and the provider of my good. As I like to remind myself throughout my time on this plane, this is my true home, the heart of me, the soul of me, the life of me, the presence within me. And I simply breathe it in and I breathe it out. And I allow myself to just be aware and just be satisfied to simply be in the presence. And in this presence, I bless. I bless myself and I bless all life because I know that's all there is for me to do is to bless and be, to bless and be the blessing and understanding that in the presence, there is only the one and in the one, there is only a wholeness and a completeness of being. So an absolute faith in the creative process of my life, in the creative process of all life, in this state of blessing, in the state of allowing myself to be that givingness of life, in blessing, out into the cosmos and beyond. I know for all of life and living, what I know for myself, there is only life, there is only God, there is only good. And I know I'm already responded to in knowing this and affirmed in this as I say, and so it is. So we are going to listen to the mighty Mark who's going to share some wonderful, true ideas with us right now. Well, good morning. And thank you for joining us at the Redondo Beach Center for Spiritual Living, our virtual service via streaming as we practice safer at home and social distancing. 
I'm Mark Ruth. I'm a licensed practitioner here at the center. And it's my pleasure to provide today's Science of Mind lesson based upon Dr. Moira's talk, Life's Expression. In a few moments, I'll explain how the monthly topic of honoring the divine feminine in all is part of life's expression. Since it is the Science of Mind lesson, I'd like to quote from the founder of Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, when he wrote in the textbook at page 35 and 36. The life which we live is the universal life expressing through us. Else, how could we live? Our thought and emotion is the use we make, consciously or unconsciously, of the original creative that is the cause of everything. Concerning this concept, Dr. Holmes says, this is the essence of the whole teaching. Because life's expression is the essence, because we recognize that life, with a capital L, is the thing itself. It's universal mind, it's intelligence, it's spirit, it's God. It's the basic premise that God is all there is, because there is not a spot where God is not. It's omnipresent. And we identify with that concept because we are all made in the essence of God. Spirit is in us, through us, and as us, and the Creator expresses through us. And we make this declaration that our thought and emotion is the use we make, consciously or unconsciously, of that creative thing. Our thoughts and emotions are creative. That is why it is important to think consciously from our highest point of view, because what we sow, we shall reap. During this time at home, instead of worry and dread, we can focus on our wonderful immune system that fights disease. That's focusing on our health. And we can help our immune system by keeping our social distancing, washing our hands, using sanitizers, and not touching our faces. The doctors say that is a critical element in helping our immune system. Holmes told us that the trained thought is more powerful than the untrained thought, and that applies to understanding our emotions and expressing them appropriately. Part of life's expression is to express gratitude for having this very gift of life and the consciousness we have and the free will to make choices that are best for us and for those around us. And as we step back from life's expression, we can see that we are actually living an affirmative prayer or a prayer treatment. We've talked about that we believe in the one God, the Spirit, called life. We recognize that, and recognition is the first step of treatment. We identify with that presence in us, through us, and as us, and that's the second step of prayer treatment. In our declaration, our thoughts and emotions, we declare that we want to express in life, such as a strong immune system, and gratitude, that fourth step in prayer treatment. We're thankful for our lives, our consciousness, and our ability to choose. Now, finally, we release our word for what we want in life into that creative medium, the soul, the law, and here is where we honor the divine feminine and all. For the divine feminine principle of nature gives birth to the ideas of spirit. And we release our word into the creative medium, the subjective mind. So, life's expression is the essence of science of mind teaching. For how we choose to express capital L life 
makes all the difference in our little L life. And so it is. Announcements. Reverend Catherine. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone out there in our virtual world, and welcome to our service. We have so much information that we would like to share with you, but we don't have time to do it all in our short time with announcements. So if you will, take a look at the information card that we're showing you and all the different ways that you can contact us to get even more information. We know that you would find it useful. What I am going to share with you today are the things that we are offering this week in our virtual world. On Wednesday morning, April the 1st, our 11 a.m. morning service is going to be broadcast right here from the sanctuary, and you can access it in exactly the same way you are with us now. That is youtube.com slash rbcsl. We hope that you will be there for that service and enjoy all the richness. That same day in the evening, Dr. Moira is continuing a class that she began last Wednesday evening. It is at 7 p.m. and it, the class is called Self Mastery. And so we are continuing with that class and you can still register even though you may have missed the first class. We are eager to have you be a part of the group. It was an enriching experience. What you need to do is contact office at redondocsl.org, and that is how you can get all the information for the class, including a link as to how to access it. Again, all of our information is going to be available at the end of announcements. Continuing on Tuesday evening and Thursday evening, we are having a virtual prayer room, and this is on a Zoom channel. And for the link for that, you can also contact the office in order to get there. The Zoom platform is different from live streaming, but it's very effective in that you can see everyone else who is there in the prayer room with you. The camera is now going to show you one of the several ways that you can help us. We are so appreciative of your effort to be with us today, and also we thank you so much for the donations that have been coming in. We, the camera is showing you our text to donate number. As a spiritual center, we are physically closed, but we are committed to keeping our virtual doors open throughout this time of needed isolation. We invite you to consider donating to our center with your financial support. But as we close with our announcements, we are again going to share with you our complete information slide so that you have time to write them down and know that at the end of our service, you will get yet another opportunity please get in touch with us. We are looking forward to hearing from you. And now, as we move from the details of our virtual life into a space where we allow ourselves to feel the connection with spirit, the one power, the one God, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am.
And so now I invite each one in this gathering of light to focus on the breath and to know that as each one breathes consciously, what we are breathing when is I the breath pray. of life itself, the power, the presence of the divine, breathing itself into us and out from us, and to lean into that presence and to allow the total embrace of that presence to saturate our entire being. And in this sense of lightfulness and blessing, we form virtually a circle of light surrounding this beautiful blue-green planet, Earth. And as the circle of light surrounding this beautiful planet Earth, from the heart center of our being, the light center of our being, we send from the heart light into the world. Spirit's light, for we are its conduits, we are its outlets. Spirit's light going forth into this beautiful planet Earth with its healing power, its transforming power, its unifying power. We allow this planet of ours to be saturated with that beautiful energy of transforming, healing love within it, on it, around it, and about it, vibrational, light-filled, love-filled energy, making all things new, mending and fixing and healing whatever it is that seems to require it, providing the wisdom amongst us all to be what we have to be right now and to do what we have to do right now to be one mind and one body and one heart and one soul, vibrating only to the radiating light of spirit and its wholeness and its completeness and its fullness, light and only light, love and only love spirit and only spirit showing up in everything and every one and all of creation. For yes to being the outlet to the inlet of divine grace and its blessing and its light and its life and its love and its peace, and its beauty, and its power, and its goodness, and its kindness, and its compassion, and its unifying strength, and energy, and beingness. For this is the mourners that we are called to right now. And so I see this beautiful, planet Earth, coming into its own, open and receptive to being the planet of serenity that it is meant to be. And I see all the scintillating bright heart lights surrounding it being transformed by the givingness of life through each one and uplifted into that awareness of all being well. For God so loved the world that God created it and all therein and on and around and moved in to what was created and remained as a very real present help. So always and ever to the one, 
to life, to light, to love, be the glory in and through and by means of each one of us and all aspects of life and living. I send forth what I know to be true out into the cosmos and beyond, knowing it is already responded to affirmatively as I say, and so it is. I feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper into my God. And so here we are, my dear ones, on this great good day together again. And it's always a joy to be with you all. And it is our honor and our privilege to be able to serve in this way. So we continue in this month to look at the wonderful aspect of life as the feminine aspect, the mother aspect, the giving aspect, the creative aspect, the birthing aspect. And so we're looking at life's expression today, and we know that the creative process of life is expressed through each and every one of us and through all of life and living. And the question I think to ask ourselves is, well, what exactly is that expression? And of course, we always come back to the one thing, the only thing, and that is love. But love not as we know it, as I've often said, but the divine love, the way of divine love, the being of divine love. And that, to me, equals L-O-V-E, love's omniescent vital energy, or life's omniescent vital energy. That's what love is to me as I see it from all of my own small experiences and all of my studies throughout the, the years and the um, collective wisdom that we have been given and handed down to us. And so that means that you and I are love's expression. And I think that this is a time now when you and I are called to understand that a little bit more fully and deeply and embrace it a little bit more fully and deeply and be it, show up as it a little bit more fully and deeply. Life's expression, so that would be life's omniscient, vital energy. And that's big. And it's beyond what I can comprehend in my human mind. But I know there is a knower within me that can comprehend that through me. And I trust that knower. I really do. And so I can remember, in spite of the, 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 the uh, challenges that face each and every one of us, in spite of those challenges, and in spite of a feeling of, well, what can I do under the circumstances, and the response to that is, you can do more now than ever you've done before, and so can I. And what would that entail from you and for me? That would entail from you and for me wakening up a little bit more fully, becoming a little bit more mindful, becoming a little bit more focused, becoming a little bit more deliberate, a little bit more conscious in all that we are. That's how we can best serve. And when we're in that state of unified consciousness, then there is no option for anything less than that to enter in. There really isn't. And so that's not saying that, as the, that I can ignore the humanity of myself. I don't want to. I am human. I am divine. You are human. You are divine. We are both of the sides of this particular coin of an individualized expression of spirit in form, in form. The very fact that we say form or we say material form means that there is a density to that that there isn't to my divinity. There is no density to my divinity, but there is to my form, my individualized expression of spirit as form. And that's very fine, it's wonderful, it's a beautiful thing. The fact that I'm a human being allows me to have all kinds of amazing and wonderful experiences. 
but all I'm asked to do is not over-identify with that and forget the divinity of myself and the divinity of all of life and to be aware of that. And that's what we're called to do right here and right now, to come higher, to come higher up in consciousness and to stay awake and to be mindful in spite of our anxiety, in spite of our fears and concerns and worries, because they will visit us. We're human beings and these things visit us. And it's okay. It's okay to feel afraid. It's okay to feel anxious. It's okay to feel slightly worried or really worried or whatever it is we're feeling, it's okay. What's not okay is if you and I identify with that as being what we are because it is not, because love is not that, and love is what you are, and love is what I am. Love is potent and powerful and strong. It is the most potent, powerful thing in all of life, in all of creation. There's nothing stronger than love. And that, in spite of what we might think of ourselves or feel about ourselves, or what we don't think about ourselves or feel about ourselves, that's what we are in truth. We are this indestructible energy, the omniescent vital energy of spirit itself. That's the truth of us. That's the eternality of us. That's the eternal self of ourselves. That's the continuum of ourselves. That's what we are and what we always will be. And as we awaken more and more and more in the great spiraling process of advancing, unfolding life, we will move more deeply into that awareness and become more of it and more of it and more of it because that's the evolutionary process. We morph ourselves into more and more and more than ever we were before. That's the way the creative process works through the material world. It's changing all the time, constantly morphing itself into something greater. And yet, the thing that it is itself, the love that it is itself, the life's omni and vital energy that it is in itself is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow remains the same. It's quite a mystery, as we all know, and we're all endeavoring to unwind it. But it's very exciting mystery, that's for sure. And you and I are called now to be the vanguard of all of this, we who are deliberately concentrated and dedicated and committed to spiritually unfolding, truth students that we are, have said yes to all of this. We have said, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to wake up. I want to know myself as who and what I am. I truly want to be all that I can be. And that's why we gather here like this at different times. That's why we come together as a spiritual community, so that we can focus ourselves on the awareness of being this essential essence of life, the spiritual side of life, as well as the human side of life. And when we do, it helps us to celebrate the beauty and grace of the humanity that we are. And so, it is so uplifting when you go to the scriptures, all the scriptures, and all the great writings. And when you go to the writings of Ernest Holmes, my goodness me, every time I pick up the textbook, Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind and Spirit and its practice of the heart, every time. <coughs> now, you're going to hear me coughing from time to time because anybody who knows me knows I have a frog that visits me all the time. It never goes away. I've made it my prince. And I have some water here, so don't worry about it. It's not anything to be concerned about. It is indeed, now I'm drinking Adam's Ale water. We call it Adam's Ale in Ireland. So fear not, little flock, all is well. Now, when you go to Ernest Holmes and you go to page, um, it's 282 in the handbook, textbook, you read. Stay with the one, stay with the one. Never deviate from it, never separate yourself from it, not for a moment. Because to desert the one in the hour of need is to demonstrate that you do not know the truth. When you look out and see things at their worst, this he says 
is the supreme moment to demonstrate and understand that nothing, no obstruction can stop the operation of truth. When you look out and see the worst, this is the supreme moment to do your work, the satisfying time to do your work. And then he says, any person who can throw themselves with complete abandon into the unlimited seas of receptivity are the ones who will receive the greatest reward. My goodness me, is this not the time when we must not separate ourselves from the one and never deviate from it? Never, ever, not for a moment, he says. Leave the understanding that it accompanies us, and not only accompanies us, but it is within us, it is around us, it is about us, it is above us, it is below us. It is everywhere present. There's no getting away from it, whether we like it or not. This is great comfort to me when I take up these beautiful words of wisdom and I read them. And they're not just his words, they're ancient wisdom. They've come down through all the great ones throughout time. And he also says, faith, Faith is something that you and I are gifted with when we understand what I have just shared. And he calls faith, he calls it a mental attitude that is so convinced of his own idea, so accepting of his own idea that to think anything to the contrary would be impossible and unthinkable. That's what faith is. He also says in the very first page of the textbook, the first chapter, to think that the divine, the creator, God could create mankind and leave mankind in bondage, bound, without the opportunity of coming home to himself, discovering himself, is to think the impossible. So we have much going for us indeed. We have everything we need to overcome, to triumph over any challenge that might cross our path. But, as he said, we have work to do and this is the best time to do the work. And what is the work? It's the work of love. It's the work of love. This is the time when great good things are happening. Have you noticed it? People are walking around, uh, they, they actually see each other, they, they, they sign to each other, they say hello to each other, in the distance, safe distance, of course. And they're not walking around like this all the time with their gadgets in front of them. Isn't that wonderful? We're paying attention. We're being more mindful, more careful, more aware of each other. And love, if it be love, does not alter when it altercation finds, as the good old bard Willie himself said some time ago. It's solid, it's always constant, and it's what you are, and it's what I am, and it's the stuff that we are made of. And yes, let us weep our tears. Let us cry in the night when we wake up, crying in the night, or whatever it is that disturbs us and discomforts us. But let us, having been present to that visitation, pull ourselves together and know all is well in spite of conditions, in spite of what we're hearing, in spite of what we're seeing, all is well, but it takes the mind and the heart to be strong in the awareness that we are more than we think we are. We are more than we feel we are. We are life's expression, love's expression, the outlets to the inlet of the pouring of grace and love into us all of the time. But Yours is the privilege and mine is to making a choice to be its outlet. It's not forced upon us. It's an invitation. And
And spirit never comes without an invitation, never calls without an inv invitation, and doesn't show up without an invitation because we have all been gifted with free will, ours to choose or not to choose. And so, my dear ones, sooner or later, along the spiraling journey of our lives, we will awaken into this beauty, us amazing, unified state of being. And we will probably smile, smile at our journey back into it. And so it's for you and for me today to know what is mine to be, what is mine to be, what is mine to be right here and right now. Yes, I am more confined than I've ever been before. I'm more sequestered than I've ever been before. And so are you. But we don't have to go anywhere to make the difference. What we have to do is to know and feel and be one with what truly is. Life is an amazing, incredible gift. And it is always only spirit's own energy in expression in every single form, in all aspects of life and living, in all the material world and creation. And we are called now to recognize that in ourselves and in each other and to bless and to bless and to bless and to show up wherever we are as that love in expression, to be that love in the supermarkets. And when everybody else is running to grab this, that, and the other, we're not judging them, we're blessing them. We're blessing them into knowing what we know. We're blessing them into the peace that passes understanding, into the abundant life that was promised, into the joy that is complete. That's what we are doing wherever we are. We're blessing. We're showing up as the blessing and we're blessing. So we're being the blessing and we bless. That's what we're doing. So yes, yes, it is yours. Yes, it is mine to take care of the vineyard. And the harvest is definitely ripe for all of us right now. And the laborers are few, we are told, but we will ensure that they are being added to as we go about the business of our life and living, divine that we are, human that we are, whatever we are, however we are, and it doesn't matter what we think or what we feel, whether we believe this or not, the truth is, the truth is, I am the life of spirit in expression, and so are you, and so is everybody else, and so is every aspect of life and living. And so what I'm knowing now is this, yes, I will arise and I will return back to the house of the Father and I will cast the burden, all burden, upon the Christ within me and I will go free and I will put on the mind that was in Christ Jesus and I will in my Father's house celebrate the life that I am and celebrate all of life and I will call it good, and I will call it very good. And I will make merry in the divine, and I will sing, and I will dance, and I will know the truth that sets me free, that sets all of life free. Because that is the message, and it always has been, and it's always been available. And that is where we focus at this moment in time. So yes. I cast the burden and all the false comforts aside, the bags of potato chips and the pots of ice cream or whatever that is that's cold comfort to us all right now. And I put on the mind that was in Christ Jesus and I embrace to myself all those wonderful vegetables and fruits and so on and so forth. And I do everything I can to support this system. And I bless my mentality and I bless my emotionality and I bless my physicality and I bless my spirituality. And I call them all unified, integrated, good and God in action and only God in action. And when I know this, when I know God is for me, and I know that which is in me is greater than that which is in the world, 
all is well in my life and in my living, and it can be in everyone else's too, and ours is the privilege of sharing this without thinking we have to turn ourselves inside out, upside down, and become something else. We don't have to become something else. We have to become what we already are and let that mourn us out. So whether we're sad or glad or whether we're worried or whether we're full of faith, whatever that is, we're just going to be ourselves in it all. But through it all, honor the power and the presence that takes care of us all. And this is the message for us to ponder and linger like of old. Mary did, pondered all these things in her heart and will do as Paul asked us to do. Just think upon everything that's good and whole and wholesome and do the best we can. That's all we're asked to do, the best we can. And if we're doing that every day, we can sleep well at night and know the next day is a great good one too. Mother Nature teaches us, when I was coming in this morning, the birds were singing up a storm, the flowers were blooming so beautifully, the trees were budding, 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 burgeoning with life. And I said to myself, said I, I say thank you, nature, for teaching me that I should never separate myself from the one as you never do. And because you never do, here you are, the fullness of yourself. So my dear ones, you are greatly loved, you are greatly cherished. Be the strength that you are now and know this too is passing and with every day, we're getting closer to the completion of this experience we're all having globally together one family, the family of God, one race, the human race, one experience, we're all having it. And so always and ever, to God be the glory by means of you. And as you know, at this time, we have Reverend Catherine's going to come forward and she is going to um, share with us something wonderful. to watch your service online. I miss coming to church on Sunday, but I am glad to see Dr. Moira and others and seeing the church as well. Seeing people and the sanctuary made me smile. Thank you so much for going to the trouble to have church on my computer. <laughs> How sweet is that? How beautiful is that? I love these sharings every Sunday. And the reason why we have these sharings every Sunday is to understand ourselves and to have each one of us realize that without all of you, my dear ones, all of you in community, forming this community, being the heart of this community, being the energy of this community, being the givingness in this community, because we all come together and every single one of you are part of this. And as I say on Sundays when we're not virtual, every single one of you sitting in these seats is responsible for wonderful sharings like this and the wonderful things we hear in these sharings. If you were not in community, if we were not all together in community, these wonderful things could not happen. And because we are one mind and one heart and one family, beautiful things happen. And so much of the work that we do, you do not see. It's behind. And we have inreach and outreach in the community, and the calls upon us now are greater than ever they have been before. So I want to thank you for all of your givingness, all of your service and your goodness and your kindness, because we are here together to help each other, to support each other, to serve each other. This is about us serving each other and making the difference and being the better part of ourselves in ways we couldn't be if we were not together in our spiritual community. So yes, we are here, and we are here with one thing in mind, and that is to serve you, the community, to be as much as we can be, whatever it is we can be, to meet your needs now. But I get my comfort from knowing that we're not just the ones in service, the ones who show up here. 
You're all in service because we are all part of this community, the one mind of spirit who had the divine idea to bring into being the uh, Center for Spiritual Living in Redondo Beach. So you are as much a part in service as we are here, and I thank you for your service. I thank you for your good thoughts, your good deeds, your good feeling every single day and every single week. And now, with me, as we always do, we will share, share together our blessings, and we will celebrate our prosperity, that we should have enough, and out of that enoughness, be able to share with those who are in great need is such a privilege when most people in the world cannot do that yet. And I think one of the great goods that's co good that is coming out of this is for us to understand that we may feel limited in a way in this our beautiful, wonderful United States of America, and maybe feeling the pinch of things, but oh my goodness, the majority of people in the world are feeling much more than we are every day of their lives as they try and figure out how to provide for their families in safety. And so thank you for all your doing and all your being and all your giving so let us take our gifts now and bless them and say, divine love consecrates my gift. It goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper. All those who give and all those who receive, I rejoice in the sharing of my good, and I release my gift with love. And so it is. And now, my dear ones, um, in conclusion, we are going to have our Sunday prayer, which is our way of blessing the world and our way of reminding us of who and what we can be out in the world. And we always dedicate this prayer to love's expression in everything and everyone, and love's healing power going out from us as a community to settle like a warm, soothing, comforting blanket all over this world and throughout creation. So join with me now in knowing deeply this prayer as we pray it with all our hearts and souls and power and might. I know divine love enfolds me. Divine light leads me. Divine life lives in me. Divine wisdom inspires me. Divine compassion expresses through me. And divine power protects me. All that I am is spirit's life and expression. It is good and very good. With deep joy and generosity filling me, I go forward now in sacred service, supporting a compassionate world that works for all. I move through my days with grace and ease, in peace and love, in health and wellness, in fullness and plenty, and in loving relationship with all. What I now know for myself, with blessing and in deep gratitude, I know for all life. There is only God. There is only God, there is only God, and that God shows up by means of you and by means of me. It's our joy to be here in service today. It's our joy to be with you in virtual company. And until we meet again, know who you are, lean into your source, trust your source, and rely upon its principle. It never fails. Thank you.